What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the 2021 Kickoff Podcast. I'm your host, AC. I got my co-captain, Sam Sherman. We're going to talk everything this year, every week. DFS and betting, representing DFSKarma.com and BetKarma.com. This is the PGA Teen It Up Podcast. I feel like it's been six years, Sam, since we've talked golf. Um, interesting year last year, obviously, with COVID. We did get as many weeks in as possible. Awesome to have the Masters in November. But we're back, man. Like, let's talk about last week, what we're looking forward to, what we're kind of planning, I guess, on a macro level um, for the viewers and the listeners as far as content goes. You know, I'm staring at our projections portal, which we're trying to do these podcasts a little bit dif- different this year, like we said we would um, for the people watching on YouTube. Um, and then let's talk last week. I was on vacation. I got my tan in Cancun. I didn't get to see much golf at all until late Sunday. You know, I kind of checked in on things, but I wasn't really focused um, at all. I had an outright on Morikawa. He was there, and then I think he kind of tanked on Sunday. So that's all I really had. I didn't even have any DFS exposure because I couldn't play. So how'd your week go last week? And then um, let's talk about the game plan for this year for the golf product at both DFS Karma and Bet Karma. Yeah, I I didn't watch a ton last week with like NFL um, and stuff like that. I mean, I watched some and I like when it's late night. I had, I'm so mad at myself, but I bet Harris English all the time. And I looked at that number and I was like, no, that's not a good number. And then, of course, he won a tournament he shouldn't, didn't even qualify for. But it was fine. I had a lot, right? I mean, Hideki, like a lot of people killed me because I play him every week. And like, even for him, it was a bad putting week, which is saying a lot. Like, I think he lost like over nine strokes putting and finished like literally in last. So that was a little annoying because I had like, you know, five guys in the top 10 and then Hideki in my main lineup. But it is what it is. It's kind of a teaser. I think this week's more exciting because it's a full field. We get a cut. Um, in terms of this year, I mean, I reach out to people on Discord a lot. I mean, I just, I we have our portal up that I um, update every week, uh, most days. And I just want to open people. I mean, is there anything you want to see you're interested in? If you want to see more of the stats that I use on there, I mean, uh, you should sign up with our um, our partners, Fantasy National. That's where I get literally all of my stats, all of my rolling things from. But I just want people to know if they want to see anything to reach out to us either on our Discord or on Twitter at uh, uh, ACRI, and then we'll get it done. I mean, I think this year, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, is a little more normal. But it's a pretty packed one again. I think we'll see a lot of uh, like last year where a lot of guys, I mean, a lot of those tournaments after COVID were like stacked fields. I really think that with another major coming up already with the normal schedule for the Masters, I think you'll see a lot of these guys uh, playing in a lot of events starting in kind of February. So this event is like the strongest it's been since 05. Last week was the strongest it had been in like 15 years. So I don't know. I feel pretty good. I mean, this is the best yeah. DFS sport, obviously. So I'm just hyped to have this back. Football is draining and golf is the best. Yeah, football is getting towards the end of the season. Although my Cleveland Browns, shout out to oh. this is the Browns, babe. We can't not talk about the Browns mid-January playoffs. I mean, you know what we do in Cleveland, Sam. I mean, this is ex- – Just be honest, like, this is- do you actually, like, do you actually think they can beat the Chiefs? Like, are, yes. do you think they actually – 100%. Like, like it's, not, it's not even like, in question. Percent- what percent odds would you actually give them to win outright? Like 15? I mean, if I'm being realistic, I'd run the simulations at about 5%. But based on them playing with house money, them getting Batonio back, Cockledge should be playing. Denzel Ward, you would figure, is going to be back. I mean, I think if Ward's back, back, they like maybe could cover if Ward is back. I love the, I love them to cover this week. I mean, they, you know, you, it's going to be a better matchup, I think, than people think, which I, I like this. I mean, it's, it, this is house money, man. The Browns have nothing to lose. I, you know, I've been touting them since, you know, back in the day when they were like 1-31, and and I'm just so happy for the city. It's fun, man. Like, we're going to be partying this weekend. I Again, mean, we have nothing to lose. No, I'll give it to them. I mean, like, no one thought they'd win last week. So, yeah, I mean, they've already outkicked their coverage, no pun intended. So, it's like, I don't know. I think this yeah. sets up, and we'll get back to golf. I think this sets up for Baker just to be horrible. Like, we'll see. It, like, I mean, it's gonna be, it's got to be a shootout, right? I mean, the the Browns get, they got the firepower. They can run the ball against KC. Not to get off topic, we got to talk about our Browns, but we did it. We injected it into the podcast. So, let me circle the wagons to get back on track. Um, 
you know, I'm looking at the website right now. It's 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 redone again. We put so much into really both brands. I, I can promise you guys that Tail, Sam, and I in the betting space for, you know, Bet Karma for our golf picks, like, you know, some of the props, a lot of the, the stuff we do is the outrights. I'm mostly an outrights player. If you read Sam's content and follow some of the guys in the Discord chats who do the prop plays as well as the prop bets, it's unbelievable, literally, how profitable we've been. Like, I hate being that that guy trying to, like, pat ourselves on the back. But the amount of units that were tracked last year alone, Sam, between you and I, that were one, I can, I hate saying it, but we won't be as good as we were last year. I mean, it's, I, I, if I was going to say, I, I will tout myself for a second. I mean, I had a 100 and po- or plus 128 unit season. I had eight winners. That's probably not going to ever happen again. So I'm not I mean, saying we're going to. The weeks yeah. that you weren't winning, I was winning. So, I mean, there was just screenshots after screenshot. Again, head to the Bet Karma Discord. That's where we kind of update our official picks. This is the sport for me that I absolutely love to gamble on, period, because I like the upside. Um, I mm-hmm. like finding, like Sam and I are always looking for the guys at 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 1. You'd be surprised. Again, over the course of the season, right? Let it play out. Don't get frustrated in the first two to four weeks. I mean, frankly, I feel like we'll probably start off cold. I mean, it kind of is what it is. And let the season play out. There'll be enough big wins. And these are the type of wins that, I mean, frankly, like, yes, you can win in NFL and NBA betting. But th- those are more of the grind um, type of ways to build your your bank account. I, you can really have some big haymakers. So stay tuned to that. Again, content mostly free at the website. If you want to tail Sam and I's DFS core plays, I mean, we put a lot of money into them. Um, that's You can access that on the website as well. So that's the quick housekeeping. Let's just get into the Sony Open, talk some quick golf here. Um, starting up top, Webb Simpson, 11,100. I mean, Sam, you can talk again briefly on the top, you know, guys here. I'm looking at Neiman, um, Matsuyama, you already talked about him. Uh, Harris English and Berger. I like Berger a lot for what it's worth. More cow my boys there. You know, I feel like the chalk always goes to Webb. I mean, is he the guy? Are we locking him in our main lineup this week? I'll tell you what, quickly, you know, my research is just looking at the projections portal and kind of the names, right? I mean, I'm not going to be as much in a date. I don't think anyone will be early in the season. I don't like most of the guys in this entire field for what it is worth, period. So I probably will lean this week. If I'm making one lineup, which I do more often than not, and then I use our optimizer on our site to make like 20 or 150 if I'm MME, and I probably will lean towards actually paying up for one guy or two guys this week just because I don't like the rest of the guys. I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, it's weird. I think this year, I will say, last year we always kind of preached and went away from it about like, you know, you kind of want to start your cash games like below 10,000, which I think is viable, but I mean, yeah. Webb, like, maybe it's more of a narrative, but par 70 Bermuda is, like, his thing. And he has finished top five here his last two starts. He's finished top 26 in a row, and he's never missed a cut. So he seems pretty safe to me. I think he'll be the mega chalk, um, which is probably justified. I like using him in main lineups. I like him using him in cat. I think he's obviously, as I always say, anyone who's going to be over 20% is auto-fadeable in any tournament uh, for golf because it's so volatile. But... I like him. Um, we talk about it every week, but like people just won't own English because he's tired. Um, so English won't be owned because he just won. Um, I think Hideki is interesting because even for him, like I said at the top, I mean, like that was so bad. And now he's like only the fifth most priced and he's still probably the best ball striker in the entire field. So I like him, especially because he'll be like half or a third of the ownership of Berger and Sungjae. But yeah, for me, I don't know. I like Morikawa. I like you can kind of find flaws, and they're all elite players. But I think if I'm looking at kind of the top, call it top 12 price guys, I really mainly have interest in Webb and Berger and then Hideki if he keeps kind of lower owned. But other than so, that, I don't really I'll go on any of these guys. Something that we'll both, like, we, we, we let off the podcast with, you know, we're going to try to do more of this year, and that's talk about, the actual data um, in the projections portal. Now, a column I do like to look at um, for DFS and especially for betting, like 100% for betting, is right next to the projected ownership column. Obviously, that column in itself is awesome, especially as you update it later in the week in the bigger type of tournaments. Um, Mm -hmm. The win odds. I love looking at the win odds column. 
Um, there's a reason why Webb is eleven thousand dollars this week. It may s- seem like it stinks and it doesn't smell right, but I feel like you got to pl- if you're making one lineup this week, you know, cash games, GPP. You know, let's be real, you're all entering in a fifty-fifty and as well as a tournament. If you're doing one lineup, again, I'm probably doing one lineup this week. I'm probably locking in Webb. I, I, I mean, that that seven point zero five win odd percentage that you have in that column. Again, it just strikes. It's very significant difference uh, standard deviation wise relative to really a lot of the other guys, you know, as you start scrolling down. It, it, it isn't like that every week. Of course, there'll be weeks where, you know, it's like a, a DJ in, in the field and the rest of the guys or whatever. You'll see that stick out, but this sticks out for me. So I'm going there. And then I'm actually not afraid um, if you scroll down a little bit further, 3.94 kind of sticks out to me is like a discount with burger right so i actually mentioned i think joking in our discord chat the only thing i uh perceived last week not really following it was saturday burger was like in third place and i was like geez is this guy is he gonna do it again this year like every week everybody fades him i don't even know if he was on last week because i didn't play dfs but i just took a little mental note and i was like burger is just he's he's healthy again for his second year in a row him and Xander on Saturday were like feeding off each other. I think like they each shot like back, like dueling like 64s or 65. Like they just went nuts. I do Berger looks so solid. He looks like he hasn't missed a beat. That was what we hit right back from COVID, right back Berger winner last year. I think he's underrated uh, in general because I think people think of him as like only winning that FedEx or that like, you know, the one right for the uh, whatever it was called before the, um, the Masters every year or before the U.S. Open. So, I think he's viable. He's like, you know, three top 20s in a row. He's never missed a cut here. He hits a lot of fairways, which I think, I don't know if you saw at the top. I mean, that's like a huge premium here. These are some of the hardest fairways to hit, and the proximity of the rough is tough. So I like Berger a lot. I think that's, you know, we talk about baiting and, you know, whatever. I think he this week he actually will be high owns. I think like you realize, I just think that people realize he's a little underpriced given the field, even at 10000 but I don't think that makes him a fade. I like him better than Sung Jay, who I think is going to be even higher on at 98. Yeah, he's Berger's got enormous win equity at the end of the day. And he's a tr- I mean, I know all these guys are in it to win it. I get it. But Berger is kind of a little bit of a psycho when you see him on the weekends where he's literally got that Patrick Reed type of personality. That I like him extra for that. And you know, the win odds technically bake that in. I mean, you can kind of see it in the data. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I always secretly like Berger. I hate watching his swing. I mean, it, I think DFS players are pretty good golfers, or at least they think they are. You know, I might be included with one of them, and it just doesn't look like a natural golf swing. So I think they tend to fade him more often than not. Honestly, I swear to God, because of you know his swing alone. All right, let's move down to the next tier because, like you said, people will play Sung Jay. There's nothing wrong. I mean, Sung Jay is a great play. Yeah, I, I play you, could start, you could start your main lineup with Sung Jay. I have no problem with it. Totally. Um, I'll let you talk about Cameron Smith. You were kind of on him always at the right times last year. I kind of tailed you on a couple. I just, I I have no input on him. I think answer probably will be popular at 9,400. Just thinking about the dynamics of what we need this week. And then lastly, um, I don't even want to talk about some of these other guys if you want, but Palmer stuck out to me again, watching from Mexico, AKA not really watching hashtag box score watching, you know, Palmer. I was just like, Whoa, there he is again. Like Palmer, at the end of last sure. year was in a gr- was in a groove and i'm like dude this guy is coming in again and fire i don't know i mean palmer's probably a great play this week so to me it's like top burger web um i like ryan palmer a lot like i said i guess answer but that's kind of where I, I'm i've at. seen it three times i one of my one and done leagues started last week and i took ryan palmer and was laughed at and he was like tied for the lead in the last round. I was like, I just know there's a double coming. Like no one else is making doubles, but Palmer will find a way. And lo and yeah. behold, he made a double like on the back nine. And ah. himself out of it. I mean, he just he, that's just classic. I mean, he doesn't really have any balls, but like that's okay. I do like him. I think he'll be under owned because you see the name Ryan Palmer, and that's like way too expensive. He's a great but drafting he, player. Like he scores yeah, he, draft he so many you know? eagles. I think he made four or five eagles this last tournament, including like two and one round like twice but um i think the interesting one and he once again sucked at putting i had a bet on him last week because his number was outrageous adam scott um why is he cheaper than abraham answer and ryan palmer that doesn't really yeah make sense. um if he's gonna be under 10 percent, i like him i do like kevin kisner i think he's gonna be really chalk but 
I think he's a good cash game play. Maybe someone I would fade in tournaments. I think right below him, Russell Henley like seems like the Harris English type where I feel like he's played well, so well all last year, like English did, but didn't get a win. I mean, Henley for me, like ranks first tee to green, first in approach, six in fairways, second in scrambling. Like he's played really well and he's a good Bermuda putter. Last year he lost a little bit, but his record here isn't great, but he did win back in 2013. So he does know this course. So I like Kisner and Henley. And then, man, I don't know how well you want to go, but I, I have two guys I like that I hate playing. I think they're losers, but I think Zach Johnson and Brennan Todd make like a lot of sense for this course. They just hit so many fairways, and this course is short. Brendan Todd, Brendan I mean, Todd. he kind of, he Dude, kind of figured he's... out his game last year a little bit, no doubt about it. Um, no, I mean, if you look at his stats, like he ranks like complete crap, and then you go fairways game second. Strokes game putting on Bermuda second. It's like, okay, what else does he really need to do? Like if he just hits the green, like, but I don't know. I just, it's tough for me to trust because I just don't think, you know, Todd, I know he won twice last year and had a good season, but like, it's really tough for me if the wind is not up to see him getting to like the 24 under. I just, I don't know if I see it. No, I but, mean, that's probably how others are going to interpret it. I was just going to say real quick on Adam Scott. I mean, yeah, his price looks depressed, but something doesn't, again, some doesn't he seem looks right. Off. No, he looks off. I agree. Um, I mean, play him. Um, you know, this range, and again, I'll continue to reference the projections portal for our hashtag YouTube family watching us out there. You know, this is something that I really value. I mean, to me, a lot of my interpretations, especially the first eight weeks, honestly, two months of golf is heavy on the data. It always is on data, but early on, it's like I, I, I always want to get grasp of like where our projections are looking into like value like you know when you're making one type of lineup and you know we try to color code things to you know make your life easier you know for anybody out there actually researching this portal and you can see in this range that's why i want to talk macro level with it there's just so many guys that kind of we're projecting right now with similar value that i don't feel comfortable really even you know acknowledging like making a you know strong flag plants on really any of them because these guys to me are kind of all the same guys you know i mean it's kind of a guessing game i know i know it sounds lame to talk about it like that but that's how i'm thinking about it and honestly that's what our projections portal is literally telling us it's saying good luck you know again this is more for the single lineup type of people good luck trying to figure out which guy is ultimately going to come from this range that's why for me this week i don't will not be doing this every week i can promise mm -hmm. you but i probably will try to anchor my main lineup around like a web in a burger i mean that's initial glance it's like i want two guys with at least win equity uh two guys that I can trust making the cut and and you know having a potential top five between them and I'm, and i'll hopefully get lucky with the rest i mean this range to me in general in this like 9k range just seems you know, or into the high 8k it's just they're all kind of the same right and it's early in the season nobody's really in form it's hard to make judgments right mm -hmm. I mean, you agree with that so. Yeah, I mean, I think the only, I think you'll see a lot. Um, and it's funny. Someone pointed out, and like, I think someone was like trolling, but they're like, "Oh wow, I wonder why there's a correlation between guys who play well at tournament champions and come to Sony Open." And they're like, "Well, yeah, that's because they won last year and they're clearly really good." But like, I will say, I think it's a, it's a, for me, it's easy in that, you know, in this range where these guys are, like you said, kind of really similar. It's like. Number one, I'll go by ownership because I mentioned this in Discord uh, earlier today to someone. Like, if you're talking to me about Zach Johnson, Billy Horschel, and Matt Kuchar, they are like really similar players to me. I think all have their ups and downs. But if one of them is going to be 6% owned and the other ones are going to be 18, that's like the easiest decision ever. Like, golf is so volatile. But on the, on the other thing is like, yeah, I'll favor the guys who played in Westview a little bit. At least they have some form. Um, I mean, can we just talk about the cash lock of the week? Charles Howard yeah, III. I, mean, I want to know. History. No, it, Is it? All right, I didn't know that until just now, so thank you for that live update. Breaking news. We should have, like, a breaking news segment on here. I Like I said, it's early. I haven't really had time, but is is he the guy this week? I mean, yeah, I guess course history um, makes I sense, think right? Funny, like, Charles Howell, in his last nine starts here, has five top eights. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, what? that is – that's – that's pretty ridiculous, especially if you can build a lineup, like I said, to kind of link two of those other guys up top. I mean, now you're talking, now you have like a really, you know, 
core pun intended like a really nice core going and to where you were finishing earlier in those last comments like that is how i play my dfs game anybody that watches this knows that for sure i think in the core plays like my lineup's called a hybrid dk because it's used in mm -hmm. cash and dps but historically like yeah, you don't want to make a lineup. I think people, Sam, I think people a lot of times want to make a cash lineup that they have to find and make sure everybody's 25% owned or 30. I swear to God, like, I think I, I used to think like that like five, six years ago when I truly didn't get it. But you, it's not the wrong thing to do in just cash games, but I want some leverage. And that's why, again, I'll go right back to the, the projections portal for those watching on YouTube. Um, we make the color code very easy where – you don't have to just stare at a bunch of numbers and look for the low ones. Like some numbers should stick out. I mean, I'll kind of just bring a couple up right now. And of course this will change. Sam updates things throughout the week, but you know, in that same, in that 8k pivot, right? I mean, if Howell is chalk, looks like Eric Von Ruin, who to me is like the same player is coming in extremely much lower on at 3%, at least what you're projecting him for. And then if you go down the range that I really love this week in, I, feel like it helps a lot of weeks it's like this mid to low 7k it seems like at least early on um I mean, there are going to be where you win and lose i mean this is like yeah, where you, you got you got you got to pick the right guys of course to finish your core but you can still cash in golf this is why i love dfs golf you can cash with only four of your guys making it you know this sam like there's the cuts are i don't know i mean i just feel like the last few years like you can be fine. You can make your money back getting four or five or six through. Of course you want six, but it's freaking hard to get six. And that's why I like to get some low own guys in my lineup, even if it's just one or two, because in the event that those guys make the cut and your core goes off, I mean, you could be, you know, in a really good spot. So yeah, I find me some cash, guys, Sam. Like, yeah, I, I just think cash is like, don't search for everyone who's going to be shocked. I just think it's actually the opposite. Just don't in cash, at least don't fade someone like you would in tournaments just because like, yeah, I mean, I think anyone in golf is mostly favorite. Like I say a lot because it's so volatile, but like, you know, if Charles Howell is going to be 60% owned, okay, then just plan because it doesn't really matter if he misses the cut. You have lost nothing on the field, but if he does finish top 10 again, you're completely dusted because six fans of the field owns him. So I don't know. I mean, I'm excited to get this range. I need to know if you're playing Grillo. I need to know if you're playing Kokrak. I need to know if you're playing Keegan. I mean, these are the murders. No Kokrak. I'm actually not playing Keegan. I'm not, I'm not even, don't even talk to me about Keegan right now. I have all year to get mad at him. Yeah. I'm not doing it the first week. because, <laughs> Like I said, I'm making one lineup this week, and if I got time, I'll uh, run the optimizer for 20. Um, Grillo, no, same thing. I don't want to get upset week one. I'd rather die with other players that I'm not used to dying with. So I'll probably look for leverage, I guess, elsewhere. Um, you know, I'll take a couple. Who's sticking out to you in like um, this mid seven k? Chalk I will not be eating is Mark Leishman. What's his price tag? Leishman is seventy nine, and people see his course history and the fact that he like played not atrocious. I mean, he is like he's very lost in my opinion. I, I, he does not look right. And he did play good in Atlanta, right? That was the final tournament of the season. I remember that. Uh, I think, yeah, he met. I mean, I just, it's people are just gonna, he, I mean, he's like be, getting buzz for some reason. I don't really know why, but um, I'm gonna lose money with Brian Harmon again because that's what I do. Dude, that's a boy. I hate when Brian you say Harman, that, like, this is like Brian What's funny is I hate Brian Harmon as a person, as a player, but I like him for fantasy because, like, he, except when I play him, he's consistent. I don't know, dude. You say this all the time about people, and it makes no sense. Like, this is a Brian Harmon course. He hits That's the ball like a pussy, he hits it straight, and he makes a lot of putts if he doesn't suck. So, like, I don't know. I mean. All right, let's stay in the Brian Harmon thesis quickly for a second. I don't know if Travis is there in the background that can sort this, but on my end in the projections portal, I just sorted by value, right? So the projections portal is sortable. You know, you can filter with all these columns, like, you know, course, horse, rank, and the far end of the screen, the rank versus salary top 20 odds. I mean, there's a lot of numbers on here and, you know, especially the bigger tournaments. I mean, I, I got pencil out, paper out. I'm writing notes down. These things do help. Um, but for example, value, you sort this, you know, Brian Harmon comes in as, you know, Sam's projecting him right now for the sixth most valuable golfer in this in entire field. So the math is telling you it's a good play. It's probably a great play for cash games and GPP. I know sometimes, you know, we talk trash on guys, but that's all for the fun in the games. 
but we're projecting him fairly strongly this week. Um, his ownership looks somewhat, you know, where you would think it would be or his price tag about, yeah. you know, 10%. Um, so, you know, that mm-hmm. that's a, a good example of kind of how I'll, I, I use the projections portal right there. So, yeah, I, li- I like Harmon. Who else? I need lower guys. I need low 7K guys. And even I need a couple of 6K guys. Is there anybody you trust for cash in 6K mm-hmm. or low 7? Um, I have a funny one and we get to the 6. I mean, low 7s. Um, I already bet him at 90 to one because I'm a sucker, but Russell Knox, I mean, if you look at like the course comps, I mean, he kind of makes sense, except it is Russell Knox, but I mean, like, you know, Harbor town is a really good comp where he's one where actually my flyer of the week, Brandon Grace is one, um, Webb's played there well there. I think he's interesting. Scott Piercy is someone I get trapped into playing all the time. I don't know. I mean. Piercy basically on his front nine, he's going to go like four over and that's kind of it for him or he'll play decent. He just has been playing like quietly pretty well. Um, he ranks, I mean, 11 for me, T to green, 10th in scrambling, top 20 in approach, further or better. I mean, he's a terrible putter, but if he hits the fairways, he can do pretty well. He's played pretty well in um, Hawaii. And then, I don't know. I mean, it's this range is tough. I mean, I might go back to my guy, Cam Davis. Snedeker has that success. I bet Cam Davis is popular just because, like, everybody played him. But isn't he not an accurate player? Like, isn't he just, like, a crush off yeah, the team? He kills it. Yeah, he just crushes it. I mean – that, that, And that's not needed here, right? Mm-mm, no, distance doesn't really matter. I mean, I think – I don't know. The Kevin guy I'll just drop. I'll drop and go back up. But I think it's funny – do you remember there was like a two month period of like Adam Shank chalk? Yes, I actually looked like, at him at 6,600. I actually looked at him. <laughs> six, dude, I'm just saying. So, I something I've told people in Discord a lot, and I learned this a long time ago, which I think is so valuable, is if you go to the portal, something that I think, and this is mainly applicable for guys that are kind of lower, lower 7K and 6K. And if you look at kind of their top 20 odds, and then you look at the implied ownership, you really want guys who have a high probability, at least relative to where they are in top 20, and then you look at their ownership. So Adam Shank, and again, it's still Adam Shank, there's obviously risk here, but you know he's gonna be under 5% owned. And if I were to look at the top 20 in the portal, or if I looked at my implied Vegas, you know, Vegas odds, if you transfer it to percent, has you know Adam Shank finishing top 20, call it 13% of the time, whereas I have it like more like 17 or 18. It's a pretty significant edge when you factor in ownership. And a guy like this, you're just looking to have a made cut. So he's someone who I think is interesting in that regard. Um, His stats are fine. And I just think something that people get caught in a lot, me included, is like you get down to these guys and it's like, oh, well, he's a really shitty scrambler. It's like, well, dude, there's a reason he's 6,600 because clearly he's not that good. So Right. I just think that's something interesting. I think he's. I think Doug Gim will be popular at 69. I do like him, but I think he's going to get some ownership. Why is that? Um, I don't really know much about him. I feel like I don't think. I've I don't know. Him. I've seen. Yeah, I've done like minimal kind of reading around Doug Gim. I think is going to be on just because like he's cheap and his he just will rate really well on a stat model. Because um, I was looking around and he like ranks like top 10 in um, like approach T to green birdie or better. And he's just going to have that in a lot of summers. And he's like, his form is decent because he's come top 22 of his last three. And um, on top of that, I think he, yeah, he missed the cut last year. But yeah, he, I think he's kind of the, when I say chalk, I mean chalk for the range. Like, I think he'll be like. Hey, why, why'd you mention Brandon Grace? I thought about him when I looked at, before we get on the podcast. Why is he at seven? Uh, I mean, I know he's. He's kind of yeah. Whatever. He's looked out of sorts. I just I, if I'm going by course comp, you know, I mentioned Harbor Town. I mentioned TBC Southwind. Right, I'm playing him. Mentioned, you mentioned him. I was thinking about it. I'm playing him. What about Kevin yeah. Na? I mean, Kevin Na stuck yeah, out to me. Yeah, Kevin Na. I think he's. I almost. I played him last week and he was fine. Um, yeah, Grace. I don't know. He's been like, been terrible for a long time, but I just he's so cheap. And I mean, he has made four of his last five cuts. His last start, he finished eighth. So that's at least interesting. He's cheap obviously and course history wise i think i was looking yeah I mean, he's only played once we finished 13. um anthony if you, you know, don't super fire you can play this guy that 
Asian guy, Takumi Kanaya, at 7,100. He's like a phenom. Huh. I'm not sure if I'll get there, but he's like been the number one ranked amateur in the world for like many weeks. And he turned pro in November and like won his first tournament like on the Japan tour and then like won another one. He's a freak. I see Sepp Straka there. I played him a few times last year. He, he hit, Did he made boy, a lot. Anthony, your boy CT Pan, any love? I mean, he paid me twenty thousand dollars one day, and I ne- I never played him again. <laughs> I just I don't know, I won't play CT. You know, it's funny. It's like no. all these names. This this is just the typical early season tournament where like all these names in the six K range, the low seven, the mid seven. I mean, hell, even in the upper seven, these guys are all the same guys. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and you gotta be careful. Later in the year, we would have different analysis later in yeah. the year, but when nobody's played. These guys are all the same guys anyways. It's not like a, a big tournament like where we can make strong stands. That's why I'm embracing volatility this week. Like I can't wait to play. I'm playing Brandon Grace. Like F it. Like you brought yeah. him up. I actually looked at him before the podcast. I was I was honestly in the projections portal and I was like, oh Brandon Grace, 7100. I know he sucks, but I thought about the comparisons of the courses. So I'll play him. <laughs> Kevin I Nod- think, like, you have to be careful because like and me included, because it's like, you know. A lot of these, any stat model or any tout site you read, you know, the, the stats are from like, you know, six weeks ago, right? Like that yeah, was like their I most mean, recent tournament. That's the thing. It's like, we're just, that's why I love playing golf because it's a yearly sport that you got to kind of pay attention to where like, you know, baseball and these other sports, like things just change. And it's like, they're different players, different teams, different coaches. Golf is, they generally are what they are. I mean, yes, there's up and ups and downs, but we kind of know what we're going to get from these guys more often than not. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of the cheap guys. Anybody else in the six K range? I mean, and then we can kind of finish the pod from there. Yeah, I mean, I saw like two. I have one guy that you'll be interested in. I just kind of live on the pod and realized that I liked him. I mean, this guy ranks twenty two in my model for stats, top twenty in form, top twenty in course history, one hundred twenty five to one, tenth in approach, twenty seventh tee to green, and his last um, he has he finished six two tournaments ago. And course history wise, he has a, let's see, he's made seven of eight cuts here, three top 25s, a top 10. That's Kyle Stanley. No, oh, that's my guy though. I actually consider him know. too. All right. Fuck it. I'm <laughs> playing him too. I thought, I mean, he, that's he, he hurt me so much though. When I've played him, it's like, Oh yeah, dude, he's, he burnt, he all, he'll, he's like the, uh, trying to get different sport. Like, I mean, golf is so – everyone uses a lot of same stats. But, like, he just, like, looks like any of these top-tier studs in I'm playing. Like, football, basketball. Where it's I'm, like I already, everything have, I already have my lineup. Yeah. Jim Furyk, 7,200. He hits a lot of fairways. He does. Um, You're totally gonna Chris, Kirk, Chris Kirk was actually playing a little bit well last year. Dude, my boy uh, Norlander's down here. I played that guy a ton last year. You know, in the in the middle of the summer, he's, he started heating up, and then he's kind of – Viral blood control, actually, looking at it from August uh, basically to the end of the year. I mean, looks like he's missed his last three cuts. But this is a course that you would assume Norlander would probably at least fit well with. Yeah, Harry he Hitch. Finished ninth, here. He finished ninth here last year. Wow, dude. I was all Michael set to Thompson, trick. Michael Thompson's mm-hmm. had a, a nice comeback mm-hmm. the last you know year and a half, two years. I mean, he's interesting down here at 60. I mean, there's just so many guys. He prepared to quit Brian Stewart, and now I see he has four top eights in his last seven starts here. So now he's back in the player pool. I mean, he played that guy so much last year; it was. He owes me. I mean, he, he's he's cashed out for me, but he owes me even more. Like I'm like, you talk about like, we're a member of a lot of fan clubs, but like Brian Stewart, like I've always oh, the last guy I'd say the last two cheaper guys, the only ones I'd use, um, Brian Gay, who like recently won two tournaments ago is playing well he played last week great putter um and then the only like, super pun i play is chase seifert 62 no one's gonna own him so you own him like one lineup all right let's finish the the podcast with a, a you know not the web simpson type bet you know how we do it what's a bet you're making this week that you like whether you made it or not yet i mean i'm pulling up the odds i have not made any bets yet but i will um anything you like uh, yeah, I've made – And for the record, I, people, we will update the official picks like we always do later in yeah, the week, yeah. which is – I'd say, I mean, my longer shot 
I don't know. I mean, I will say I already said it. I might actually bet. What is odds? Yeah, I'm probably gonna bet Brand Grace 150 to one. That's just like kind of a crazy number. <laughs> All right, I'll put a couple bucks on it, I guess, for fun to tail you. Um, I'm looking at my it right now. I already said it. I'll just say it again. My one, I'll give it away. My one is Russell Knox at 90 to one. I did like. I I mean, that's not a bad play. Um, I'm looking in the, I love living in the 30K range, the 40K range. I know Neiman finished hot. 22 seems maybe a little a little high there. Um, yeah, I I'll probably go back with Palmer, even though I don't think this is necessarily a Palmer course, which is why he's probably getting that discounted 33, but I don't know, man, that's the type of guy that like, no, in this he range, like does yeah. he? Yeah. He, this guy has a little bit more upside for me looking at this, like 33 to one range with all these other guys. It's like, if anything, I think Palmer comes out of this rather than Kisner and Henley and Cameron Smith and, and Billy hole and Lanto. Yeah, Palmer, I mean, Palmer's made six of his last seven cuts here, two top eights, two top 20s. It's pretty good. I just made a bet live on the podcast. Ryan Palmer, 33-1. Yeah. and um, All right, that does it. I mean, unless you got anything else, Sam, you know, of course, we'll always uh, add, subtract some things to the projections portal that will update throughout the week. Um, content, core plays, all that jazz. Uh, obviously, just keep checking out DFSKarma.com and BetKarma.com. And um, we'll go from there. Let's have a good season, right? Um, that's it. That's all I got. Anything else? Um, no. Let's go, uh, Brandon Grace. Let's go, Browns. Right <laughs>